Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. My name is Richard Acton, and in this episode, episode 13, we're covering chapter 6 of part 3 nursery of book 1, Dawn of Octavia Butler's uh, trilogy, Xenogenesis. Joining me this week in this confined space with a peculiar alien entity is my co-host. Michael Glinka. Hello, everyone. How you doing, Michael? It's getting uh, really hot and packed in here, in this confinement. There's more and more people, and yet less and less things to do <laughs> mm. okay yes we get some uh slightly unexpected stuff i think in this chapter yeah uh, to be honest uh to all the audience i this chapter is a bit long that's why we're only covering one this is just chapter mm-hmm. six but the ending really it's like it's such a i've been saying this all the time that the book always takes an, an unexpected turn for me but this i did not expect <laughs> <laughs> interesting because i mean it it seems like there's been a little bit of foreshadowing of something vaguely in this direction but maybe it's just like sooner than you would have expected well i mean it sort of like in the last chapter we were talking about it but i thought it'll be more like you know i don't know i just didn't expect it to be yeah i think i I was expecting something like this but not so soon Hmm. yeah it it took me by surprise (laughs) (laughs) So let's uh, let's uh, talk about what you were expecting from your predictions from last chapter. So I p- predicted, I was predicting that sensing that Lilith may be in danger, considering the whole situation in the confinement, Nikanj decided to show itself to Joseph um, or all the humans to aid and make them realize that it's true, it's real. What she's saying, it's real, and they need to get the shit together basically they need to collect and they need to be uh working together to you know for the greater good i would say okay so i mean you nikanish did show himself to joseph you got that part uh on yeah that was that did happen yeah uh, he showed himself uh itself to to joseph because you know it thought that joseph it's lilith's mate although it wasn't really that well it was pretty clear in the previous chapter about, you know, like how Lilith, you know, said she, uh, she likes Joseph and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But like it mm-hmm. was, I thought it was more of like, you know, understanding because Joseph, you know, as he's described the book, described him, he's very understanding, very uh, clear minded, you know, straightforward. Let, let's wait for look around. Let's wait for the facts. And he, he is being really like, I would say, a support for her. So I understand mm. from perspective, but um, yeah, Nikanj in this chapter wants to protect him to to ensure that Lilith also survives in a way. Yeah, I, I got the impression that it was uh, not particularly attached to Joe as of yet. I mean, it was a, a little bit of kind of uh, because Lilith's attached to him, but it, it seemed to be more that it was telling Joe uh or, or exposing joe to itself so that it, it knew uh about the owen carly so that lilith would have an ally more than out of sort of a specific concern for joe that was the impression i got yes absolutely i absolutely yeah. agree on that yes um mm-hmm. but you know let's get to it and mm-hmm. um let's see what the chapter brings to us okay then so chapter six summary um we can feel that the Nikan appearing in there is like the surprise is palpable, right? Like um, Lilith feels that like she's scared because um, you know she's thinking me like jo- if Joseph meets Nikan, he you know she feels like he would not um, talk to her anymore. And this is from the book quoting: "Why couldn't it stay out as it is, as it had said it would?" There, she had finally caught it in a lie. She would not forgive it if that lie des- uh, destroyed Joseph's feelings for her. And this is interesting because, like, oh, she she thought she thinks she caught uh, Nikanj on a lie, but I think it's more of like, as we're saying, Nikanj concern for for Lilith here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Although I think it, I think she may be technically correct, right? In that, it, in uh, all technicalities, uh, they everybody said they would wouldn't. Be correct. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the the um Owen and Carly seem to be quite fans of uh, uh, that sort of literal thing. Uh, like if it's if it's literally true, then fine. And yeah, like you know, lying by omission and all the rest of it. Uh, but 
yes, I think on on the technicality that they they said they wouldn't come in unless she was like in in danger or something. Yes. Then, yeah. But then again, <laughs> but then again, she was. I mean, she's been trying to catch them doing anything that's even yeah. remotely deceptive. <laughs> yeah. Well, even remotely <laughs> specifically untrue. So I can see why it would stick out. Yeah. <laughs> But it seems that for some reason Don Kali decided to show himself mm. itself to, to Joseph and Lilith assures is trying to assure Joseph that he's not in jail and won't be hurt. But the moment Joseph saw Nikan, she like he jerked himself uh, to feet and tried to hide between the wall and the bed. What is it? Lilith demanded in Don Kali. She stood face to Nikan. Why are you here? Nikan spoke in, and Nikan spoke in English so that he could endure his fear now privately and be of help to you later. And mm. it's it's like, okay, we get it. Like it, this is this is now getting serious. I, I think that conversation was like, okay, the series, even though the book was saying, oh, you know, people are getting restless, blah blah, blah but it seems that there must have been a serious threat that mm. um, her family felt that you know the Nikan finally decided to appear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a there's definitely um, a discontent brewing in the the people that have been woken up, um, and that's why Nikanj is here. And so, just a, a, I wanted to point out in this exchange that um, Lilith starts talking in Oankali, and then Nikanj swaps uh, and start, replies to her in English, presumably for um, uh, Joe's benefit, mm. and. And it's interesting that because there's a few times in this where Lilith kind of tries to talk to Nikanj in Oankali and it ends up sort of excluding Joe from the conversation a little bit on a couple of occasions. Um, I think once deliberately kind of to like avoid hurting Joe's pride. But that's like from, from um, I don't know, it seems like it might not be the smart thing to do on Lilith's path doing that. I, I can see why, like, instinctively she might. Do it the Want first to. time, yeah. But the like, she's she's profoundly concerned that you know Joe's going to see her as being like alien and sort of too much of the the other, and yet she's kind of excluding him from the the conversation in that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a it just struck me as a, an interesting little. It's it's a good device. point. It's a good yeah. point because um I've. Yeah, it is visible that she spoke, but I think also Nikanj at some point go speaks to her uh, in on Kali when she mm. jumps back to English. So I think it's more of like, um, yeah, initially I think it was the on Kali surprise, like what what is he doing here? Uh, whereas later on is I think yeah, as you said, sort of trying to protect yeah. uh, Joseph's pride. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely it's uh, it's it's used a couple of times when. He, one or the other of them wants to kind of uh, discuss something like directly with the other one, as mm. it were, not uh, and not include Joe. I suppose initially here, there's just, you know, it's a there's a sense of individual confrontation. You know, like what what are you doing here? Like go yeah, away. Yeah, I don't want you interfering. You know, like when yeah. parents come and interfere. You know, whatever you're doing, and especially as you're foreign and you speak to them in the foreign language, and they're just like, oh, his parents are here. Especially in my case. <laughs> <laughs> happened before many times mm-hmm. like what are you doing guys doing leave us alone <laughs> <laughs> but true true yeah. i agree yeah. on that so at that point joseph's asked lilith she knows the on kali and lilith introduced the, uh, them, so, them to each other and joseph admits he didn't believe her even though she said don kali real and now he sees one in his own eyes and um Nikanj comes in, sits down, and Ben starts the conversation. They're hungry, you know. Uh, Joseph tells, well, actually, the others might be, but Nikanj tells them that those guys should wait and realize how helpless are they uh, They are without Lilith's um, uh, presence. Um, mm. And continues with the, on this uh, thought. It's, it's, it says that it's crucial for Lilith to become a leader for them. Um, but Lilith is like, well... It's not really a leader. It's actually more of a sacrificial goat uh, in reality. And, you know, but they can just like, okay, well, technically, you know, it's in your power to make their lives easier because whether she helps them or not, their fate is sealed. And, uh, you know, and you can't say uh, profess for all of them to survive instead of just a number of them. Um, also, in Onkali, Nikanj tells her that the humans are plotting against her and it wants her to survive. 
Lilith mm-hmm. tells it that she knew that would happen, but you didn't tell me you would help them. Uh, she leaned against in her table, uh, against her table platform, head down. I'm trying to live, she whispered. You know who I am. So it, there is, yeah. you know, although her actions seem to be like, oh, you know, sometimes she acts like a jailer, sometimes like, you know, she's with on Kais and she's against them, but like, she honestly just trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I think she, she does um, still feel somewhat you know, bitter about being forced into this role. So I think that's definitely uh, uh, still kind of wearing on her mind a little bit. But yeah, she is definitely still trying to survive. So it's, I was just going to go back to a, a previous point. I'm just going to say that uh, when Joe was kind of, uh, you know, I, I didn't believe... I didn't really believe that you know we were they were kind of on an alien spaceship. There were aliens until he actually saw uh, Nick Ange. and as I say that, I, I I could see that being a not unreasonable position. No, absolutely. You know, like when, when we talked about it, like before, you know, what would be or how would we behave in such situation? We we took his approach. You know, as long uh, collect evidence, wait and see, right? So hmm. we would be skeptical until we are uh, you know given the evidence or hmm. you know reality but with the assumption still going with the assumption that yeah it might be real but let's see right um let's continue playing alongside you know this whole situation hmm. yeah and uh you know some some very concrete evidence has just like uh, presented itself to you in a surprising fashion yeah i mean that was a very concrete uh <laughs> evidence that <laughs> nobody else you wouldn't need any more uh, yeah. and to be honest it's a large four-armed alien uh, with tentacles. Yep. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That is 100% what you were saying. I believe you 100% everything what you say from now on. <laughs> but I was going to yep. say back on, you know, Lilith being um, against being put on the position that she was mm. put in. And to be honest, I think everybody would be apprehensive against this situation. And the problem is in a situation like that, like when you, you know, if you would be like waking up other p- uh, humans and saying, you know, oh, we are an alien ship, we're trapped, we need to work together, blah, blah, blah. And and then you're like, okay, I, you know, explain to them the whole situation about the Onkali, you know, about the interbreeding, etc., the trade, and, you know, and you're like, and they're like, oh, okay, cool, right? Psycho. Mm-hmm. And you're like, listen, I don't know if, whether you, care to believe me or not that's a fact and that's the end of the story i can imagine it it not just being like tough but just exhausting like being hmm. in that oh, situation yeah, like you, you keep saying the same thing to those people and they're like oh, okay and they just start like, shuffling away from you and you're like whether you believe me or not this situation is a fact doesn't matter hmm. what your beliefs are opinions it means nothing in here this is what it is accept it, move on. And yet people, you know, still fight her back, right? They they they, they are in the, the denial. And it must be exhausting. Which is human, right? You yeah, it's that. absolutely it's expected, but it must be super exhausting to oh, yeah. to her. Yeah. That's uh, uh yeah, and I I wouldn't want to play her role here. Yeah. So she she's she's an interesting protagonist, right? She's quite a different kind of um arc you know to many of the other you know she doesn't have kind of a conventional like um hero um you know like uh, answering the call to adventure kind of thing she's quite um she's refusing the adventure all this time even though she well, yeah, was technically she's given a the superpowers <laughs> yeah yeah she's she's got but she's she's not at all happy about any of it really is she she's she's being disposed this um you know bestowed with these abilities but it's for this sort of sinister purpose that she's been kind of you know coerced into um uh, serving this function uh for the owen carly um and yeah she, she's got kind of a very different um you know she's not sort of like uh doing the you know, the hero thing of kind of going out there and 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 uh, taking up the the burden as it were she's she's had the burden kind of st- stuck unwillingly on her and she's kind of trying to do her best with what she's got uh in this situation um and you know her um 
her awareness of it as well because we get back to that later like she's kind of very much aware that she's being picked because she has certain properties and she's she can't really do anything about all yeah. of this other than just sort of make the best of it and yeah so i think it's, she's she's quite a good um a consequentialist hero right because she's kind of uh, she's uh you know having to do some stuff that might be a bit um i know that might sort of uh you know require her to act in a way that might necessarily always be the the most moral thing to do if you're taking like a um a deontological or a, or a virtue ethics perspective, right? Uh, no, absolutely, she's just absolutely. Trying to you know, get the kind of the the best outcome, right? She wants all these people to to survive, but is kind of confronting the fact that she they not all of them might. Um, but that's um, the thing, right? Like, imagine being in a similar situation, right, where there's an apocalypse uh, on the planet, right, and you're uh, thinking about yourself. There's a survival you of yours or your family right your closest uh, ones right and you try your best to survive but at the same time anything that stands in the way of your survival is you either try to make sure that it doesn't stand in in your way anymore or you just eliminate that danger because i mean you know that's that's what drives all humans right eventually the primal need to survive right to keep going mm. right so her so far, I think, when it comes to the moral choices, she is okay. Like, I mean, she hasn't done anything that would put her in such a... Would put her, sorry, in the dark, darker spectrum of the, you know, of the gray area, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But I feel like... But later on in the chapter, it actually goes... Well, it, it just later on, it just tells her, you know, like, actually, you know, the situation is, you know, whatever it is, if if she needs to protect herself, she needs to fight and there's no other choice about this, right? Mm. So should, should we carry on and get to that as we go? Yeah. So basically, Joseph's at that point, you know, after talking now, like that Lilith wants to, uh, Lilith wants to live, um, says, you know, if, if it's possible for Don Kali to clone them, um, by either taking their reproductive cells and grow human embryos in artificial wombs, or maybe just recreate them from the the kind of gene map print they use, right? Um, mm. To just protect uh, Lilith just in case. Uh, and he kind of rep- responds to that. We can do that too. We have already done these things. We must do them to understand a new species better. We must compare them to normal human conception and birth. We must compare the children we have made to those we took from Earth. We are very careful to avoid damaging new partner species. And that statement revolves, uh, revol- um, make Joseph revolves, but hmm. Nikan tells them that they revere life, even though they have the cap- capability of to make humans, but the partner must be biologically interesting their personalities and cultures are important as well. That's why they try to save as many humans as possible. Yeah, there's a, there's a thing that Nick Ange says. He said, in a very real way, you have captured us. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's. I think it's it's the way I imagine the trade, right? Being, it's like your first love, in a way. You're like sort of starstruck, you know, like the first stages of love where you like, you know, infatuated in someone that like, mm. you see them in the, as, the, as they say, the, pink through the pink glasses like pink shaded glasses right you're like Mm -hmm. everything about them they're like fantastic they're most beautiful blah 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 right and i think that must be something like that that sort of the wow they're like oh like you you cannot just stop thinking about them yeah it it feels very biological from them as do so many things right um but the the, you get kind of an, an analogous thing in um like human contexts where like the incentives just line up so that something kind of inevitably happens like i mean uh, say take um i don't know the uh, like the exploitation of the rainforests in sumatra or whatever right you know, where we're still like cutting them all down to grow palm oil mm. and that's basically because a set of economic incentives just make that the thing that will makes sense for people to do at the moment and there's kind of a collective action problem to actually stop doing that for the uh, broader benefit although the oankali don't seem to have that many issues with collective action problems they're quite good at consensus yeah uh, yeah it's a weird 
yeah, understanding the the motivation for the trade is definitely a bit of a a difficult one. I think. I it's I think it's near impossible for us to fully appreciate or understand that the the meaning behind the trade because one it doesn't happen to us. Hmm. It's that's the, the, that's the thing. We don't need such thing, right? It's it's. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, a well written, uh, well written Zeno mind trait. Yes, right? it's. It, I uh, think it's so Zeno that it's not. We're not really able to find such a similar trait. I would say in hmm. in nature and on our world. I can't think of any other species that would do such thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the trait is. I think your your analogy works very well actually because of the, the like the kind of first um uh, infatuation thing because that uh, the trade seems kind of like you know, a species level sex for the Owen Carly right they they're taking on a new partner species right? so it seems like that would that would fit yeah although the expression of interest in human culture I mean I can see individuals sort of but so far i've not seen much effort from them to preserve human culture yeah that's in true living form that's true because they completely wiped everything else and hmm. i mean i think they did say because i mean they give some books to lilith but overall the whole concept yeah, I mean, behind they, is just like, like you're gonna start from zero sorry that's that's the, there's a big difference between like the artifacts of culture and the record of it and the living version, right? It's yes, like absolutely. dead languages. It's just having the the record doesn't really give you the the things. So if they want human culture, they need a group of people who actually have a shared culture to get that experience of human culture. No, absolutely, so absolutely. Yeah. So I I think it's more of um, yeah. It's this is like the thing about Don Kali to say the what the the. The culture is and the personalities is what pulls them, but at the same time, I think it's only on the individual level, sort of. Yeah, this person is interesting, but overall, you know, at the end of the day, they're just gonna be assimilated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, the the talk of, of human cultures and so on kind of got me thinking about like what exactly would have happened if the Owen Carly had shown up like before the war, like with. How would this whole thing of like, they want to do their trade thing, but presumably they wouldn't want to like engage in a war to initiate the trade? I think, um, Richard. First of all, in the first case, I think they wouldn't show themselves up um, before the war in the first place. That, but we'll hmm, skip that because they are. I, they wouldn't because the fact is that um, the idea they were observing humans for a while. And uh, if I remember correctly, and the fact is that so many humans are not compatible with in general being like, you know, between other humans. So I cannot just see um, this, uh, this, this fact. And also a lot of people would try to exploit them. So, but skipping that, okay, let's skip that, that, you know, just the fact that like a lot of people, humans are scumbags. Um, mm. Let's say that they would come in and, you know, say like, oh, actually, we would like to trade with you. And obviously, we think, oh, materials with us. Now, like, we actually want to uh, basically connect our species with your species, right? So, a lot of scientists' minds would basically be blown. Like, How can you <laughs> mix, you know, completely different species that evolve in completely different manners, you know, together? And mm -hmm. then they're like, actually, we can do it. And everybody would be like, oh my God. Secondly, all the mm -hmm. sort of and uh, traditional conservative sort of uh, groups would just also have their mind blown because be like, uh, <laughs> no, obviously. Mm. And it yeah, it just yeah. it, to be honest, it would be another kind of worms that would really spike things up, spice things up. Like honestly, I think mm -hmm. like all the things about the race problems, ethnic issue problems, it would go to hundred even faster yeah that's, that's, that's interesting just imagine just imagine humans like children of the oncalian humans on the earth right there would be kids oh, yeah. in schools mm. like you're a mix you know a mixed breed and stuff like that right mm. and it would take another oh, centuries before they would even ac we would even accept them as equal to us even though technically mm. but as i just 
like traditionally when there's an external force we kind of pull together right so yeah it would be interesting because like the specific nature of the um of what the Owen Coley want right the kind of interbreeding thing it yeah it would I think it's it, it might fail to have that kind of human unifying effect because it has that whole um and a sort of you know, interbreeding of groups thing that some people always seem to get upset about sort of baked into it and so, say yeah I could see it being divisive along you know, existing group lines as well as those new group lines uh, it might not just end up with like humans pulling together as humans against the aliens but just sowing further division i think it depends how don kali would tra- address this whole conversation uh, up if they would be mm. like hello we're on kali you are you will prepare yourself for assimilation that would <laughs> unite everyone if on the other yeah. hand would be like oh hi we're on kali uh we would like to perform a trade uh, in our la- in your language, what we call trade. But in the reality is that we mix our genetic materials. We are very organic, blah, 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 right? And that would spark a massive conversation around the world, mm. right? The other, there would be so much, just everybody arguing with everyone. And it would probably cause a lot of division between people. Yeah, my money's on the the cult of the Owen Kali, right? Some, oh my like, god! Scientology style organization that worships immediately. <laughs> like, well, to be honest, we need to like do a sort of like a thought uh, experiment at some point, like predicting what would happen on the world from like starting the from t t equal minus one t minus zero and then just like from that point it's like what's the situation how the groups and countries etc would react to uh uh this whole situation how our prediction of how how it would go but in reality mm. if they did show up eventually if it was like oh you know explain the trade and what the trade is there would be wars definitely there would oh, be yeah. countries yeah, that yeah, would not so. want to people won't want to have anything to do with it and there'll be mm. people who'll be like, well, fuck it, you know, like, interesting. Like, if the, if we can, you know, if we can get something yeah, out of it. Said, cause, uh, like we said last episode, right? Like, uh, long life and super strength and, like, extra cool senses. Like, I'm in. To so. be honest, I can imagine on yeah. Kali, uh, the way we do on Kali win, like, obviously, the, the technology, right? We were always talking about, like, mm-hmm. given technology. But, like, the moment Don Kali would modify some humans to be stronger, faster, smarter, right? Mm. Those humans would very quickly overwhelm uh, the rest, right? With the prote- Like, it's it's just like, you know, in any strategic game or when you have different species, the moment you give uh, some sort of advantage, physical, intellectual advantage to a group of people from a certain population that group mm. of popu- that group of, uh, will go will gain a lot of strength very quickly and number of people following them and just general it's gonna grow fast mm. so i think it would be it would split the world generally physically yeah. and yeah. metaphysically mm-hmm. but anyway right, so that, let's go back to let's say get get off that hypothetical tangent yes and, yes uh... <laughs> so Let's recap. So uh, Joseph asks, asks, you know, if it's possible to protect Lilith by cloning her or maybe creating some gene map. But Nikan says that actually, we they do this, but in reality, they don't want to do this because it's it's the uniqueness individu- the in of the each individuals that actually that makes what makes them so attractive. Mm. Although Joseph thinks that the humans are kept, you know, in the plant prisons, Nikan actually tells him that. The only thing that changes when they're in those plants is that they're healed from any diseases or injuries to ensure that they can survive going back to Earth. Those of, and, and as the conversation appears, those of us who survive this room in the training room, and you can't refute, no, those of you who survive, and you could have done this another way. Basically, no. It's it's, but you can't refute the that they try other methods, and this is actually the best for them. As none of those uh, who kill or severely injured an, uh, another will set foot on Earth. So obviously, this whole idea is that they 
tried many different ways, right? Throughout those 250 years, you know, learning about humans, you know, what they, who they are, and then letting them sort of live together. And then basically they found out that this doesn't work. So they need to be in confinement to be mm. sort of brought into this because as they said, they, they don't want anybody to become a dictator. They didn't want any murderers or anybody who would try to harm the humans or Don Kali or both. Yeah, as it, it, it does make you wonder what exactly all, are all the other things they've tried that they've settled on. This is the, the method that works. Yeah, I, <laughs> I sat down when I was reading the, you know, making notes for this chapter and I was just thinking, what other methods did they actually try? You know, like, there's one mm. thing, confinement, obviously. Uh, there's one thing, you know, just showing yourself to the person and then, you know, but we know that some humans did commit suicide when they realized mm. the fate right their their fate and the fate of the earth so mm -hmm. it's um yeah i would like to see actually what other methods did they try uh or maybe not i would not want to I see mean, it, just just hear about it yeah i mean it does serve the certain kind of narrative conceit right you know, they've happened to settle on this as being what they think is the best method it, it may or not may or may not actually be and not going through the details of the other ones lets you kind of say this is what they think is best and not have to worry too much about it. Let's see <laughs> how, how successful this is by the end of mm. this section. So this is the conversation where actually th I found really interesting, right? So when Joseph asks uh, Nikanj if killing in self-defense is still acceptable to be, you know, because uh, they said no killing or anything to be otherwise, they will stay on the uh, on the ship forever. Um... Mm. And he asked this while looking at uh, Lilith. Nikanj tells him that she is an exempt. They give her an ab abilities to protect herself and to lead them. And it would be self-defeating for them not to give her abilities to, to, you know, to be able to do that, to, to, to lead people and to defend herself. And this is the point where, you know, when Lilith also tries to Nikanj exempt Joseph but so that he can protect himself but because he's a target because of her. But Nikanj cannot exempt him because this exemption as it's as it tells to be able to kill and still go to earth for Lilith was a consensus between the Onkali mm. so they really do put a lot on Lilith like the fact that the, the, it was categorical no killing because otherwise you're staying on the ship forever in the stasis or whatever yeah except for Lilith yeah it's a, it's a, another uh, sort of burden placed on her right she's has the uh, the possibility of, of killing someone and not suffering the consequences. But that's the thing. Uh, that's interesting because mm -hmm. the I think the Onkali, in a way, well, you can't, but mostly you can't, but I think Onkali know her so well, that the, her character, that mm -hmm. they sort of think, they're almost certain that she would not do that. Otherwise, they wouldn't give her yeah. those abilities. And I think we, we, we get on to that um, it, it sort of realization in a little bit in this uh section yes yes yeah so just to to note that like the possibility that she might have to kill someone is kind of raised by this uh, it's a, kind of a you know all the stakes are being ratcheted up by yeah. these possibilities well a lot of people when they're giving a choice their lives or somebody else's life right if they're being if they're trying to protect themselves a lot of people stand up to that, right? To that sort of responsibility, I would say. So, I don't know. Let's see. So, in this conversation, obviously, Lilith is then trying to convince that maybe if they cannot exempt him, give him better regeneration to be able to protect himself and increase his survivability. Uh, in that case, and those conversations was happening, it was actually, they're all speaking on Kali between each other, so Joseph gets angry, so Nikanj explains to him that she wants to protect him, and, you know, Lilith interjects that even though they can't exempt him from, you know, being able to kill and still go to Earth, she wants to give him regenerative powers, and even though Jay thinks he can handle protecting himself, <laughs> Lilith just shuts him down and says that's not possible. That's really yeah, funny. It's like, it's like, be realistic. Yeah, be realistic. It's not gonna yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and I think yeah. Whilst I mean, he, he has a little bit of the kind of like, you know, I could like a look out for myself. But he's you know, he's a realist. He's like, mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if, if the mob gangs up on me, then yeah, uh, it's not gonna happen. Um, and I think that's uh, 
because Lilith, you know, she she asks Nakanish to do this to to Joe without like asking Joe about it first, um, and he doesn't end up seeing overly bothered about that. Right? Um, yeah, it does. It's it, it seems like a bit of an imposition, right? And, uh, even if it's in his interest, it seems like uh, it would make sense for for Lilith to have at least been like. Uh, are you okay with me asking them to genetically engineer you? <laughs> yeah, it seems like he's like, oh, well, you know, you. she has super strength and regeneration. I might as well have regeneration. I don't mind. So yeah, this is where, you yeah. know... I think, yeah, so he's he's a, a, a pragmatist in his thinking. So I, th- I think he doesn't actually... Like, he'd be... Like, if he thought it was a, a good idea to get this and it was a, an option, then he'd probably be, you know, okay with it. And yeah. It seems like she's kind of making that presumption quite uh, quite early, but then yeah, she does. She cares about him. She wants to protect him. Right? But the thing is, he does ask questions, right? So here it goes like, "Oh yeah, Nikanj, uh, tells uh, Lilith to show uh, him her hand, and you know, as she shows her, like the her knuckles were you know, after the fight, they show they were completely healed. And when mm-hmm. Joseph asks, like, is that it? She was like, actually, she's stronger and she can control the interior walls and suspended animation plants. And this is where he faces Nikan. He's like, how did you do this? And Nikan responds, for the walls, I altered her body chemistry slightly. For the strength, I gave her more efficient use of what she already has. She should have been stronger. Her ancestors were stronger, her non-human ancestors in particular. I helped her fulfill her potential. And when asked how... Um, Nikanj uh, asks Joseph back, like, how do you move your fingers and how? It's just an ability similar to for breathing to Ankali. They just do it. I can he- uh, help them do anything their bodies are capable of doing. I made bio- make biochemical changes that cause her regular exercise to be much more effective than they would be otherwise. There is also slight genetic change. I haven't added or subtracted anything, but I have brought out latent ability. She's as strong as f- and fast as her nearest animal ancestors were. And this is, I think, very interesting because it gives us more mm. insight on what the abilities of, you know, the Onkalis are, right? What what they did. And I think, I suspect what, in terms of the regeneration, I think is that the, her mm. stem cells are more um, responsive. So they, they replicate more uh, faster. They differentiate, fa- differentiate faster to sort of fill up the missing cells in the body in case she loses some, right? Like in terms of red blood cells, platelets and everything, right? That's, that's our, I think that's, mm-hmm. a, that's what regeneration is. And especially bone, right? If you break your bone, as older you get, um, you know, the osteoblast, the cell, the bone, the bone cells basically are quite slow to respond because there's that not that many in that them of them in the bone. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the process of remodeling of bone is like very long. It takes around four to six weeks uh, in a healthy body. So it must be that the, basically the processes of of those such processes are just sped up, right? They, they must be more efficient, made more efficient, or at least mm. they there's more of cells. I would say in her body. Although I just to get all um, biology nerdy mm. for a bit, which is I think this is fine. perfect time this, for this it because the they finally yeah. give us some biology <laughs> to talk about. Yeah, we've got some new biology to to get into. But so the 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 challenge uh, I think with uh, so the, the I think of it as an as an information problem in a lot in regenerative medicine. That there's a lot of this um, kind of we, we always think that we can take something. Um, you know, like revert it to a stem state and then like redifferentiate it to normal adult differentiated tissue. Mm. But like the process that determined what those adult cells would be is the developmental process, right? and there's not necessarily all of the cues still present in the um, adult tissue environment to get you back to that cell state as it were so, true, you, so i think it's still we still don't know well enough whether or not if, if you take something you know, sort of out of differentiation up to this like multipotent pluripotent stem cell state where it can become some other tissue how to get it back to the adult tissue state and, and like the, the degree to which that will happen correctly just in a normal tissue environment because uh, yeah, it doesn't have the the developmental process to push it in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, the cues are missing that, there. Yeah. Doing especially mm. you know because this is very interesting because you know during the embryo uh, embryogenesis when you know all the like for example all our limbs form right so all the organs starting to mm. form 
it's all biochemical cues, right? The cells that are replicating the, the pluripotent stem cells, like like some of them are starting to release these special uh, special cues, these chemicals that you know start to attract to cells and run the vicinity. It's more of like a gradient basically forming in our bodies. Yeah, there's all these like overlapping gradients of chemicals, so that like you know at a particular position in in like you know this concentration of this chemical that concentration of that chemical means this cell type right so you there's this kind of patterning that, that the cells can perceive from their environment and that pattern no longer exists in the exactly adult exactly body so i mm. suspect that um I mean, it would be very difficult uh, if we really went into biology on this one. Um, I feel we would spend here like hypothesizing quite a long time. But I suspect what Mm. happens is, is that the stem cells, um, at least, at least uh, the stem cells in her body are brought more into the state they were when she was in maybe an embryo or maybe a bit later when she was a young child because as we know children heal very fast that's simply because Mm -hmm. the state of their cells stem cells is so fresh i would say that um it allows for that quick swift response and regeneration that you know it involves everything epigenetics the telomere lengths the you know the all the biochemistry behind it all of that you know is all you know just freshly you know Go, it's a fresh, a fresh system. So I suspect, mm-hmm. if anything, it's just sort of it. It sort of reaches that sort of level, at least. Yeah, I, so I, I bring it up because it's a, a quibble. Like it's a pet peeve of mine. Oh yes, that, that everyone in kind of the regenerative medicine field has this like, uh, what I think is an overly rosy view of of that approach. Right? You know, we'll 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 rejuvenate it and then we'll let it redifferentiate into the yeah the final thing like you haven't quite thought through the how it's going to get there but see this is the thing like you mm. know with the regenerative medicine i mean we are doing quite a lot of progress in this field but realistically mm. um it's still far far off because you know when yamanaka and here uh, um which we've talked about before can uh, mm identify the sort of factors to bring cells into a, in, to induce the pluripotency you know that opened a sort of a door to a maze a maze mm. that is the that are the biochemical signaling pathways right that basically you know the, our understanding of cell cell biology cell biochemistry was very limited and w- it's 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 incredible that you know nowadays you know my phd was about regeneration of bone tissue right and we use you know things like using stem cells from bone marrow uh and differentiating them with vitamin d vitamin c right that was stimulating the respective signaling pathways but the more now when i'm um reading about um, Crohn's disease. This is my current pr- project now. Um, I'm learning more about like the how the effects of um, uh, cytokines, the immune system cytokines have on certain cells. And a lot of uh, effect has on the adipose tissue, right? So the fat tissue. And how does it connect? Well, it connects in the fact that actually because of Crohn's disease of the immune system, right, um, over a excitation i would say in the race of cytokines so cytokines it causes this over exp- uh, like over stimulation of the surrounding cells so a lot of things happen like the adipose tissue gets over excited like it's almost similar to a person who is overly obese um that the mm. tissue re- re- reacts like in this very similar uh, uh, manner also yeah, a kind of inflammatory phenotype. Yes, yes, uh, but also it, it the, the the phenotype of cells. Even though like there's still a balance, let's say, of somebody is skinny and they don't have much adipose tissue, the adipose tissue acts as if the person was weighing two hundred, three hundred kilograms. That's the sort of mm. change. But what I'm actually aiming towards here is that actually, um, at some point of the Crohn's diseases, there's a fibrosis taking place. Fibrosis is basically forming of a scar tissue, as if you cut yourself in a scar tissue can form right this happens on your intestines it's mm. dangerous because it can close the intestine but what happens is that nobody really understands why it, how it happens right and this is my sort of um hypothesis you know i'm trying to work this is my project and my hypothesis is that mm. actually a lot of things happen 
all those cytokines stimulate the cells and normal cells like you know gut cells that are epithelial cells so they just the gut gut lining cells actually change their type into mesenchymal cells so they become fibroblast like and fibroblasts are almost like stem cells they basically you know they lay down cell matrix they're sort of they're sort of like the silent sort of tired stem cells i would say hmm. i would describe them as such mm-hmm. right so in learning about crohn's disease which is completely unrelated to regenerative medicine i've actually started to get more insight into um the fact of um the signaling pathways in you know like in regenerative medicine and also mm-hmm. the reason why i mentioned the f- uh, fat tissue is because actually the adipose tissue a lot of uh, cytokines that are very important for our function people don't realize but fat tissue is very important just for now of normal function cytokines released by adipocytes oh, yeah. mm-hmm. are actually now very crucial for development and and for certain signaling pathways that are involved in regeneration so those pathways yeah, it's a major like hormone secreting yes, organ yes yes right? absolutely Fat. and those yeah. like so, like those main signaling pathways are stimulated in you know stimulating also stem cells in the intestine mm. right so um those pathways are very similar to you know like to what stem cells are doing so mm. our understanding right it's not just like you know when project like when you're giving project science where obviously we try to limit down the variables right because it's too difficult otherwise to understand the systems we're working on but mm. what i'm trying to say is here convey the message is that whatever we do right the understanding of one system it often is very too too narrow and i remember uh, mm. i think um i don't know if you remember richard if you were there back in southampton when we were talking uh, there was a paper no it you weren't were you there about the paper that um um john was introducing about the like the uh, it was a very comprehensive study about all the sort of like instead of focusing on thing it was like looking in the very different angles and how how they affect you know, differently, you know, like the spatial, uh, spatial uh, distribution, the cytokines, they you know all this, all those different things, and basic. I don't recall. Well, basically, the the study, yeah. the paper that was um released, was t- talked about. You know how limited we are in our understanding of regeneration, and they did a study, sort mm-hmm. of like a comprehensive study on, um, looking into first of all stimulating the cells. The origin of the mm. cells, the three D, the uh, the position of the cells within tissue, right? The access to mm-hmm. certain cytokines, certain growth factors, certain you know all of those factors that you know obviously we realize yes, obviously they're gonna uh, affect, right? But how do yeah. they affect? Mm-hmm. That's the question. Yeah, it's a hu- huge number of, of variables, and uh, a lot of them are quite difficult to measure, and they can have you know, complicated interactions between them. So it's. Uh... It's a tricky, tricky uh, problem to study. Yeah, mm. and this is why I think is mm. like when I said with this project, uh, this idea of like what the regeneration is super strength in Lilith case and works. Like, I think you no, know, in the very big basic stuff, right? Just a very simplistic, uh, simplistic way to thinking is that they they can't regenerate, regenerated her, uh, rejuvenated, rejuvenated her uh, stem cells. Mm. And that was, yeah, it's yeah. already quite a big step already for an adult uh, human to, you know, uh, for their health, right? Because they're, yes. they're the, like the basis of our, you know, our lives. Like we need to replenishment of the cells of our body cells to ensure that we are continuing to live, mm-hmm. right? So I think that's at least yeah, that yeah. step. Um, I agree. Yeah. I would say also maybe being a bit more sensitive to some growth factors, Though that would be a bit too complicated hmm. to, I would say, to, to to balance all those systems that are already in a quite fine balance, right? If you change, yeah, one so thing, it's an interesting um, thing that because it, I think Nakan says something like he neither added nor subtracted anything, and yet talks about some genetic changes, which didn't quite add up to me. Um, yes, yes, um, it doesn't really, yeah. You add or subtracting something if you're making genetic changes, but uh, I think the one way of maybe interpreting it was that uh, it had not like made any changes to like protein coding type genes, right? It had not added another um, 
I think I I think I agree here. Functional like he unit. must have not add any extra genes or anything. Maybe it more like yeah. in what you're doing in epigenetics. Basically, he maybe has awakened some of the genes uh, that were uh, you know um, hmm. silent. Oh, but is it? He, he was saying it's a a genetic change. So I think so. I mean, it, you know, the genome is comprised. Uh, to go back to the the big picture on it, like we've got this relatively small collection of protein coding genes right it's one percent of and our genome they're quite so constant it's... right yeah it's, uh, one or so percent of the genome and um, those are remarkably shared between us and many even relatively distant things right and there's a the whole what's that statistic like 50 percent of the genes are in common with bananas or something mm-hmm. Right, and, uh, or fifty percent of the sequence similarity. Right, so we, the the building blocks for actually doing most of the things that we do biochemically are pretty constant across many different forms of life. But it's the the pattern and combinations in which those are used, which are controlled by the regulatory components of the genome. The, the stuff that controls, you know, the the sequencing and how much and when and in response to what and all that kind of stuff. That, that sits outside of the core gene sequences that um, actually makes most of the differences in the way that um, like multicellular organisms end up uh, you know, actually like developing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I think uh, might be the distinction, right? So maybe uh, Nikanji is making some changes to those regulatory regions to change the way that uh, Lerth's muscle genes are being expressed and not maybe tweaking the like the actual protein sequences. I think that probably is that because if it's like I I, I can't imagine them modifying protein or protein structures because there's so many like for all our listeners there are a lot of proteins they have sort of like conserved sequences within them. Some genes are very conserved, some genes conserved, uh, some proteins sorry have um very conserved structures, some of them have very conserved air- domains we call them domains but basically pieces of them that are very concerned between species a lot of species and mm-hmm. goes through yeast to bacteria you know all of these like sequences are very they follow up from you know bacteria to more multicellular organisms to you know very complex organisms and um mm-hmm. so i cannot imagine nikan doing any changes to those things because that would really could mess up things um, we already know that single, even uh, going back to my new background, you know, doing Crohn's disease, a lot of things that happen in Crohn's disease is just because a single nucleotide change in a um, in a gene, right? And it doesn't have to even be a nucleotide in the gene. It can be in the intron region, which is, doesn't code for the protein, or any in the promoter or exon uh, or the um, uh, enhancer regions, right? And it already can influence the gene's expression, behavior it it's incredible that a tiny little change just one nucleotide that would you think oh it's a piece of garbage dna that's between the genes doesn't matter it matters a lot apparently yeah sometimes it's a uh, it's one of those like uh, you know we all have quite a substantial number of individual mutations yes. in our yes. genome um and yeah they, they happen to fall in spots that are not going to be a serious problem um, or we wouldn't be here. But there are, you know, there are critical locations where you make one seemingly minor change, and like, it can know, one difference in three point two billion or so base pairs, and everything stops. Yeah, it's it's pretty yeah. incredible how those accumulations of those mutations can really. So I cannot really imagine Nikanj doing this. It it would too much, would, it could cause a lot of chaos in the body. So I think it's more of like awakening some genes from the, for example, epigenetic silencing or stuff like that, or silencing some genes that are only ex- uh, affecting the later stages of you know being as being adult, and awakening mm. and making rejuven- rejuvenating the stem cells. I don't know though that like there's not a straightforward sort of a priori way to know what change is going to be neutral and what change is going to be. A problem, yeah, I'm- because we don't understand how all of the systems work, so we can't. And and they have incredibly complex interactions with one another, and it's a kind of it's a chaotic system in in the sense of very small perturbations can have very large effects because uh, there's a bunch of feedback loops in the middle, which means it's it's a uh, very difficult to predict what what your changes will 
what effects your changes will have. Um, I, the, I, I don't think modifying stuff that's kind of outside the protein coding sequence necessarily helps you. Well, I would say sort of like, I, I imagine this this way, correct me if you're, if my thinking about this is wrong, because I might be completely wrong, but I just imagine him doing something like this, comparing, like learning about the humans, because right? he's an Uloi, so he needs to, he needs to mm. understand the, the biology of the, the genetics of the humans. Looking at the child versus an adult, you could compare Right, where to specifically those regions of areas that were like, oh, in adults, this is less um, or more uh, modified, epigenetically modified versus the child. So maybe mm-hmm. this could be the areas that, you know, um, work. And I would say that probably the Onkali have tested this stuff before. Yeah. So yeah. I guess. It would already know which regions sort of which things can be attached or cannot, right? Yeah, yeah. I say with um, with the uh, the perceptual abilities that the um, Uloi seem to have, uh, they may well, I suppose, be able to to reason about some of the stuff in ways that uh, we would find difficult. But yeah, it also think you know, I get the distinct impression there's some funky looking embryos in a plant jar somewhere from the yeah um, <laughs> i can imagine that like <laughs> the test runs yeah. Yeah. i can imagine things going very awry uh as they say mm. it'd be really like sort of like the uh if you see like the the evil scientist lair when you have the jars of things floating mm-hmm. down yeah i can imagine that'd be happening <laughs> yeah is that how exactly did they get good at this uh, I mean, it's the only way to, to, to get good at it is just trial and error. So that's mm. the, that's the only way to do it. But hey, it's it is what it is, right? You know, uh, in this case, yeah. so don't think too hard about the errors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing I wanted oh, to talk about was the super strength, right? Because mm. Nikan says that it made her as strong as her non-human ancestors obviously apes we're talking about apes in here um so i suspect this is where i was reading more read about like the muscle structure how the muscle fibers are and what could be the um uh, effect of the what he did right it did Mm -hmm. and i think what happened is that is her super strength is based on more efficient myosin actin interaction. So this is what happens in the muscle for everyone who's listening, is that the myosin, there's two fibers in our muscles, right? The mu- muscles are made of just millions of those sort of fibers, and there's this actin, is like a cytoskeleton, it's a skeleton, right? It's like, imagine a long, long uh, string of fiber. And then there's like, the myosin is like a hook, I would say, that just grabs into a, a actin and pulls on it. So I think what happens in um in what happened in um Lilith's case is that her the myosin pulls on the actin fiber stronger and faster compared to normal cases. So in compared to um um like athletes and people who go to gym often right their muscles are big mm. because the density of the fibers is higher and the amount of atp mm-hmm. the energy used for the by myosin to to pull on those actin fibers in their muscles is much more they have a higher turnover of atp so i think this is what happens in um lilith case that it's just because her body is more produces uses more atp but it uses more efficient mm. way and there's a better supply of the ATP and the myosin maybe because if I remember a myosin has to do like several steps um, of like attachments yeah, then ATP goes in and then it pulls and then like the ATP dissociates and ATP and other binds so that it can move up to change to the position in the original position maybe that process had yeah you've got this like little ratchety thing you know it's kind of sort of pulling the fire yeah so i thing, think that so. might what might be actually happening is that the, her process is much faster right the, the or the more myosin in there that pulling on the same fiber acting fibers right um in the same time in the same time right there's more everything more of it in higher density and yeah i don't know enough like um uh, comparative 
microanatomy. I don't know what would be the right for, uh, term, but like because you know chimps and and um, orangs and you know a couple of our other like close relatives, they have crazy strength. Oh yes, right? absolutely. You know, like, but I mean they're they're pretty skinny looking a lot of them, but they're incredibly strong. Um, and I like if you, if you, I think there's there's probably some great videos of like orangutans just like undoing bolts. Um, you know, you see some human come along and like bolt something down with a massive pneumatic like locking drill thing, and the rang will just come along, and just like <laughs> undo it with the fingers. Right, they're super strong, um, but I don't know whether or not that's actually down to this kind of um, like uh, increased myosin efficiency or density. But yeah, I'd be, uh, I, I would, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was something similar. I guess. Well, to be honest, I have no idea what the um, difference between mm. the muscle fiber, muscle fibers, and density of the fibers is between humans and chimpanzees, for example. Our closest mm. uh, um, um, ancestors, but no. Uh, uh, living, living cousins. cousins yes that's the word yeah. i was looking for um <laughs> but the fact is that you know when you, as you said richard you look at some pictures of the chimpanzees they're like they are ripped right it's, let's not be honest like running mm. around the trees being able to pull your whole body weight right on one arm um it's and you do it all the time right so eventually obviously mm. you will build up you know if you do something often enough you build up the strength to you know to get used to it right it is to this yeah, and she, I thought it was a, it was a good touch that um, they kind of needed to exercise in order to get this additional ability, right? Because that that would you know if you made some genetic change, you'd need to stimulate, to stimulate yes. some some muscle growth to actually get the new stuff like integrated into so your your muscle. I think that's the so other so thing that good. Nikanj did is that it stimulate it stimulated the cells in her muscles to uh, branch out more and produce mm. more like stronger mm. fibers and more dense fibers and i think that's what you're saying is like the exercise mm. gives her higher um benefit compared to normal circumstances right because i mean generally mm. uh between men male and females right and, um, is that men have higher muscle density just in general because mm. just the nature just gave us more mu- muscle density and it's easier for us to build up muscle whereas for women it's more fat tissue but if she was given um, the same or even higher efficient, I mean, I think she was given a higher efficient, like obviously because it's compared mm. to the, our nearest animal ancestors, that it must be something in those similar lines that basically her body is producing those necessary cells and those connections much faster. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps we've done enough of a biology <laughs> tangent. I mean, it's it's been a while since we had any sort of biology conversation. So, yes. Which is, yeah, it was a good solid yeah. biology uh, conversation it was so. i was looking forward to this it was really <laughs> nice when the actually man was like oh mm. this is cool this is something that we can actually have a proper insightful excuse me conversation get our teeth into so let's go back so so this we this we went up to that what nika this conversation was let was let because nikan said that it what it did modification or the modification to a little bit of his body and this is and Nikanj assured, and after that, Nikanj assured them that the changes are not hereditary because it only modified the body cells and not the reproductive cells. So this is where Joseph actually asked Nikanj if he could clone Lilith, but Nikanj said he won't. And at that point, just the very awkward silence takes over. But finally, Lilith asks if Joseph wants to go to join the others, even though she doesn't want it, but fears he will. But as, you know, Joseph goes... As if she could have prevented what was done to her, but you know it was not her choice, right? So, and finally, after some pondering, I guess Nikanj agrees that he it will give Joseph the ability to heal faster and even from injuries that might kill him. And the changes will not be permanent uh, after you know after Joseph asked you know if it's um, permanent, but it. it Nikanj will change back if he only wants, but the only side effect is psychological. And this is where actually this um, interaction confused me because um, it initially, mm. right? So, because it said, you know, like the only changes are psychological, and Joseph was like, huh? psychological? What do you mean? Oh, okay, I see, right? But basically, what it meant is yeah. that if one of the, if odd somebody else than Lily had those abilities, and the correct, not a correct mindset, a lot of bad things would happen, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, because he has this kind of like realization mid thought why they don't want to give him the the super strength uh, as a, and they're just willing to give him the the healing and it's because they're concerned that he might abuse the power i mean and yet they've given this to if Lilith, you're having super so strength and regeneration even if a lot of people bounce on you right the speed mm. of your regeneration and the strength you have you can you could probably easily overwhelm several people right and even mm. if you were you know hurt you still come out of it, you know, pretty unsight, like pretty unscathed. So it's, yeah. Yep, it's the sort of thing that could definitely go to someone's head. Yeah. So I see. You know, I understood this point when I reread the chapter again because I was like, "What do you mean?" And then it's like, "Oh, I see. I gotcha." Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, uh, uh, I wasn't quite sure exactly what the content of the realization. Uh, that Joe has kind of out of our ability to see it uh, the first time around either. But yeah, it it, uh, it makes sense. And it, it follows on with the conversation that, that he has with Lilith subsequently, kind of like uh, he, he has the realization of sort of why they've chosen Lilith. Yeah. Um, and it's because she won't abuse this, this position of power. And, uh, you know, he, he sort of, he tells her that, um, and she's like, you know, I know. <laughs> yeah, this is. This, <laughs> you think I haven't? Yeah, noticed. this is the, like the whole con. Like the you know, it's like, do you see? Do you understand why they choose you? Someone who desperately doesn't want the responsibility, who doesn't want to be led, you no, know, who's a woman, right? And it's like, well, duh. Obviously, I realized. You yeah. know, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think uh, yeah, Joe kind of uh, catches himself like. Uh, um, condescending slightly to Lilith, and then like immediately, kind of, uh, yeah. I think it's just because he's he's only just realised it for himself and is explaining it um, uh, uh, to her, and she's like, "Yeah, figure that out." But it's interesting. It's interesting that like, oh, she does realise that and still doesn't act mm. upon it. It's she is the sort of true cho- good choice uh, that Onkali made. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and he's uh, also and again quite quick on the uptake. He's like, yeah, hmm, I, I, it it doesn't help, that you know, yeah. right? So it, it make it makes it makes sense that uh, you figured this out and <laughs> it, you're still doing it because there's nothing you can really do yeah, about exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So this is mm. yeah. This is why I like. It. I I think I'm a bit slower than Joseph. It seems, but yeah, maybe I have not such mindset to be like oh actually you could overwhelm someone but then i'd probably do it subconsciously and be like oh that's why yeah so maybe this is what they meant by what was it like uh soft by quite deadly he seems to have quite good um uh, what do you might call it political instincts right good instincts yeah. for insightful uh, he's implications insightful, of power. i would say he's very insightful hmm. um and hmm. that's pro- probably why um lilith likes him yeah yeah, I think uh, it's like she's um, she's very sharp and and he's quite quick too. So it's uh, uh she's she's got someone else who's kind of on her yeah. level. Uh, nice choice. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so after this whole conversation, you know, the Nikan still asks Jay, uh, Joseph if he wants to do those changes and tell him what will happen. You know, he'll be asleep, but there won't be any surgery. Nikanj will just touch him at the base of the neck and just use it and J- Joseph's body substances to the necessary modification. It, to be honest, I think he was hoping for the surgery over. <laughs> over yeah, this. and this is like. Although I would say I would prefer not to have any surgery because I mean you know. But anyway, that's my preference. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a familiar concept, yes, right? Yes. Whereas alien inducing your body to make changes to itself with. Who knows what chemicals yeah. and stuff is kind of. I can see how that would gross you out. Uh, yeah, and this is the thing. Like he, Joseph says that he doesn't think he can allow Nikanj to touch him, and Liv says it took her mm. days before she was able to touch on an, an Nikali. Uh, but mm. Nikanj explains that the, the sens- uh, they explain that what the sensory arms are, and Nikanj asks Lilith in on Kali if a demonstration would help, but Lilith refuses because she wants to deal with it her way. But 
and it kind of does it in any way. She just like he, it, like it attacks her by wrapping the arm around the neck, to which like lives like oh well, fucking you know, just like I'm cool with it, but because you know she's just it. But to her surprise, like after a moment, Joseph goes and touches the arm, and to which you can wraps the arm around you know, around his wrist and then puts him to sleep, puts Joseph to sleep. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a, an interesting little interaction there. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's odd because it, it, she she doesn't want to like demonstrate the this this process of of like you know being held by the Owen Carly and then the well, just I'm like gonna do it anyway. yeah. grabs her. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that would be at all reassuring <laughs> <laughs> to like to look at that because I mean he's, he's taken her by surprise or, or seemingly. But still, she um, doesn't react so, because yeah. it happened several times to her, right? But imagine being yeah. a, like mm. a witness of this, and it'd be like suddenly an alien just grabs a tentacle around your neck. Uh, your you know person who you you know sort of we are with relationship yeah. with around their neck. I'll hmm. freak out to say at least. I would yeah. be like, hmm. no, I, mean, I suppose that Lilith was like quick to to reassure him, right? Yeah, like, like yeah. This this is just what he's gonna want to or what he's gonna want to do to you. Uh, it's okay. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> and it's interesting um yeah it's it, an interesting thing with um uh joe's willingness to touch um Nikanj so quickly mm-hmm. and and uh, and Nikanj had this whole sort of um a bit uh, about like you, you're going to to need to have like at least enough self-control mm-hmm. to be able to touch yep. me at some point and uh, that and uh, I, I i saw the trailer for the dune film i noticed um, you wrote notes in about dune in the hour notes and i just want to say i'm reading yeah. dune right now and you're spoiling me ah <laughs> uh, okay well the you 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 didn't you you posted the trailer yeah, to I me did, right I did. <laughs> so, okay yeah so I, so the trailer contains the gom yes, yes. yes moment where he puts his hand in the box that is pain yes. and is like under threat of death and uh, like the test of whether or not you're a human if you could withstand the pain um and uh like so survive it for the um in order that you can live yes right so i think that's the uh, the analogy i was drawing is that this is kind of a, a gom jabbar moment right he's to got to the, yeah. put up with you know, use his, his uh will to will himself to touch um uh, Nikanj in order to survive mm. to be honest i am i i'm mm. past this moment already so i know what, what what this was but like i'm really enjoying june by the way anybody who hasn't read june by frank herbert really really yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good book um i, I won't uh, say anything spoilery but yeah it's it's a well uh, i would say it's narrative. probably a grandfather um, for all the science fiction to be honest like the modern science fiction i mean it, it, it's a very kind of um conventionally epic narrative that's right? why i mean a, that's why i mean a big grand scope um, i mean obviously like so it's like no now we're reading a dawn uh from octavia butler but like when it comes to the epic sort of science fiction stuff right you know there's a hero hmm. pure hero you know it drives blah blah i would say june is like sort of the protoplast of like star wars and similar oh yeah yeah and it, it has a bit more of that um it's kind of it's almost more like fantasy than it is like science fiction because it, I mean, it has a a few sort of technologically relevant components here and there, like the particular aspects of the setting. But those can almost be swapped out magic. for yeah. for magic in a fantasy yeah. setting, right? So it's it's not like hard science yeah. fiction, but it is like epic science yeah. fiction. But no, anyway, we are talking about yeah. Don. Uh, from Xenogenesis hmm. trilogy, so let's go back to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, where were yeah, we so at? in the notes, uh, yes, it was also noted by in the book that uh, by Nikanj that Jos- Joseph was the fastest human to actually do it to touch a non Kali voluntarily. So, which is interesting. It seems that he is a very daring human, be a human being. Yeah, a very again like calm and level headed and collected and pretty logical. Yeah, so. so it goes into mm. co- after Joe falls unconscious. Lilith, uh, in anger, asks why Nikanj couldn't leave him alone. But Nikanj tells her no one ever done what J- you know Joseph did, like consciously touching on Kali from their own will and so quickly. 
And he also had hmm. two males talking about Joseph that they don't like one, the fact that uh, he supports Lilith. And they call hmm. him a faggot, even though he wasn't one. You know, after Lilith explained to him what it was, he, you know, <laughs> he was like, well, he's not, right? Uh, but the co- I kind of... Yeah, Nikanj really doesn't get <laughs> so this. So <laughs> he's like, uh, oh, okay, the cultural concept is a bit like it went woof over, whoosh over Nikanj's head. But we get what, yeah. what it meant, you know, like, and the fact that one of them said he, they didn't like the shape of his eyes. Right, it's like, oh, okay, that that basically is like, you know, they're trying to belittle him, hey, basically. Yay, you know? racists and homophobes. Yeah, basically, you know. <laughs> 1950s, yeah! Um, so, <laughs> but, Nick, you know, Nikaj tells us that because he is Lilith's mate, I mean, Joseph is Lilith's mate, he needs all the protection he can get, so... And Lilith needs to lead them, and you know Lilith was scared of them. You know how, of this. How could she become the leader of people who saw her as a their jailer? You know leaders need to be trusted. But in her opinion, all she did was to make them question her humanity. As Lilith was thinking all this thing on the floor, suddenly she gets startled by hearing Nikan speaking through both itself and Joseph. How freaky has it to be? Has it, it has to be like yeah. something you know, connecting suddenly two people just talking to you? Same thing. Yeah, so the, it's a, apparently this like brain link thing, this connection that Nikanj can have with the person who he's wrapped his tentacle around can just like turn them into a puppet. So Joseph is just now like talking with Nikanj's voice simultaneously with Nikanj. So that's <laughs> I just <laughs> that's I, not at yeah, all creepy. I mean, it's creepy, but at the same time, if I had this power. <laughs> Right, I would abuse it so much, like just just for a comedic <laughs> relief, basically, like just just messing around with people. It's just I just find it hilarious and horrifying at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh... uh. But to be honest, it did like startle Lilith, and she's like, "Stop doing that," because this is you know this is not good. This is not okay. Um, but. Yep. Surprisingly, it took quite quickly for uh, Nikanj to, cha- to change Jay, and it's just like the fact, you know, um, it took so quickly. I, I, it took me by surprise as well, because like, oh, yeah, I did change him. It's like, oh, okay. Um, but then, you know... Well, I mean, he is kind of... Uh, he's sort of lying down with it for an extended period of time, yeah. it seems. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how much is there kind of a an ongoing process while... Um, Nikan just is, is holding on to it. Well, they didn't specify, but it felt quite quickly while you know Lilith was thinking all mm. the stuff we just said. Um, mm. But at some point, this is where the chapter really twisted and surprised me. Like a lot of things surprised mm-hmm. me, and I was expecting those things to happen. But wow! So as they were lying, Nikan goes, "Why should you be down there by yourself? You know, um, to, to 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 Lilith and." Uh, and this is what Lilith this describes in her the book describes her thought is like she thought there was could be nothing more seductive than an Uloi speaking that particular tone, making that particular suggestion. And the chapter ends, this, this whole chapter ends with Lilith sort of hesitating, although she did not want to pretend that she not she wanted to resist Nikanj's invitation because Nikanj could give her intimacy with Joseph that was beyond ordinary human experience. And also what it gave, it also experienced it. So in the book, she clenched her fist, holding back. This won't help me, she said. It'll just make it harder for me when you're not around. But Nikan just waited for her until she tore off her jacket and joined Nikan in the, on the bed. The, both Nikan and Joseph uh, in the bed, where she sandwiched Nikan's body between herself and Joseph. And as, as Nikan was connecting the sensor arm to her neck. Uh, this way... This was the way she might some day be made pregnant with another, with an other than human child. Not now, while Nikanj wanted mm. other work from her, but someday. And once it plugged her into her central nervous system, it could control her and do whatever it wanted. And the chapter ends here. I was like, oh my god, seriously? A, yeah. An all like human <laughs> sex is like a sort of more of like a human to human via on Kali sex. I was like, 
what the hell? Like, I was not expecting this at all. Hmm. Yeah, I so said this. This uh, I think it, it took me quite by surprise the first time I read this through. I was like, well, "Okay, we're going to to this really quick," and it was spicy. Uh, yeah, a, a strange kind of like um, Lilith uh, has the, the whole bit about the Uloi having this seductive tone, and it, 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 that kind of juxtaposed with the how difficult we just saw it was for Joseph to even touch one. Yeah. Like, it seems like I don't know, they've got some I don't know, like major mind whammy pheromones or something going yeah, on. Yeah, and also to the fact that. that it sounded like it has happened several times before, at least, because hmm. you know she could not. She said it like she could not resist it because it would give her intimacy that nobody, you know, like a normal human body to body like interaction couldn't give. Right, so it's like. Hmm. Okay, so this happened before, and there was a conversation before. Like, if you're supposed to, you know, like the modification that Nikan gave her, like he was given, it was giving her modifications. Like, it sort of tried to understand the pleasures of her body, and like how to give her pleasure, right? So there was like, oh, mm. I thought at the time it was like, oh, you know, when you when she touches the wall, right, to find the the bodies, right, that you know it's supposed to give her pleasure, but no, it was during the modification to mm. give her pleasure. So it must have this must have happened yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So I think this um, it, it it sounds like that kind of neural interface thing that, that Nikanji is capable of doing because they're like taking over the nervous system. Um, it has this kind of capability of, of like it can perceive what you perceive and it can make you sense stuff yeah so so it can kind of like simulate whatever sensations it wants to be honest it blew my mind like just the whole idea that one Mm -hmm. is like being able to stimulate your nervous system so it gives you like this you know basically an orgasm without any sort of physical stimulation right so this is just your stimulating nervous Mm -hmm. system and then now imagine the situation of two people having the same thing but having connected nervous systems so what yeah, it's like this shared, like pooled consciousness kind of thing, where you can like perceive one another's uh, experience. It's a, uh, yeah, it sounds really interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, isn't, isn't that um, uh, James Cameron's Avatar? Isn't that a similar thing? Yes, where they yes. have those tails it's with like the, the same the tendrily yeah. things. Yeah, actually, good point. I didn't think I couldn't. Re- I didn't remember Avatar, but it's exactly the same thing that they connect those tail like those hair tails whatever to to you know mm-hmm. to other animals to connect the central nervous systems and like when the avatars or whatever the name of the species were like when they actually have the interaction you know mm-hmm. the, the basically sex they do connect those tails together so yeah it's um it's an interesting it's, it's, it's navi yes. right yes that was the well done yeah. on your memory honestly i yeah. admire your memory like it's incredible. <laughs> it's it's good on trivery stuff, to be honest. Surprisingly, but like uh, other things, it's remarkably <laughs> bad at. I think I may have talked about this before on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have sort of yeah. some things that we remember so well and hope that we wouldn't remember them because they're useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Right? You don't have any control over what exactly it is that you uh, remember well. I just found it fascinating. This this chapter ending was just fascinating. And my basically, like, mm-hmm. my chapter 7 prediction was that Nikan modifies joseph obviously he already did and then like lilith and joseph has have sex via nikan i just really didn't know where the chapter because it felt like oh it's gonna describe what's happening okay yeah and then uh, again this like uh, joseph was okay with the whole like modify me to give me regenerative abilities but the sex part without um, consent it's sex involving the uloi was not on the table (laughs) Honestly, it's it's just <laughs> so um, I don't know. I can't even grab my hand around this because, like, for mm. it's for Lilith, right? The whole concept of the Ola, uh, and Kali were like, okay, there was Chitaya. You no, know, it took her several days getting used to him, then finally touching him. Okay, accepted. She goes out. Oh, holy shit! So many on Kali getting used to that. Blah blah blah. Mm. Getting the modifications. Getting used to that. You no, know, getting used to a lot of things. Joseph, yeah, touch, yeah, modification, yeah, sex, boom, don't sort it. You got, uh, you know, 101 on <laughs> on things like, wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I kind of tossed him in at the deep end. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, kind of a very uh, rapid progression from having uh, first met <laughs> Dio and Carly to be. I um, just, but I just imagine yeah. like when we, early on about like the cult of the Onkali when when she, the Onkali appeared before the war, right? I bet mm. there would be people like that, like a touch sex immediately, you know, just get the full experience straight away. Hmm. Oh, yeah. there's, there's, there's always a few, a few right? brave ones i would say <laughs> very brave and, you know as they say there's a very fine line between being a brave and stupid <laughs> hmm. yep uh, no definitely true <laughs> but man what a chapter hmm. such an interesting chapter it was so yeah. um there's a lot packed into it but i mean the whole thing takes place in it's like three people in a room well two people and an alien and in a yeah. very small room uh, and this, this, like the setting is like a, as dull as imaginable. Like it's just like a gray box, and yet it, there's all kinds of super interesting <laughs> yeah, stuff going on. It's like you know, it's, it's just, uh, it mm-hmm. just blows my mind how this book can really. You know, I was expecting a sex scene, okay. I was sort of maybe expecting sort of I don't know, um, Lilith so becoming finally the leader, people accepting her, and, you know, finally mm-hmm. like the hot sex between her and Joseph being mm-hmm. interrupted by any kind. <laughs> Like suddenly walking in. Um, uh, I thought it'd yeah, be some sort well, of like this comical sort of uh, relief, sort of like sort of this side of situation, right? To the, or like a conclusion. Mm. But no, this completely went whoa, okay. <laughs> completely different way. Yep. Uh, well, it's the it's, it's their their whole stick, right? They they want to breed with the humans. They want to trade genetic material. So. It's incredible. I just find it like it's it's <laughs> such a. I tip my hat to, to the author because uh, there's a lot of I can I I I can imagine I could imagine a lot of things, but this early in the book, wow, good. I'm looking forward to the next chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seeing how that's gonna go. I just mm. I can imagine. Although just on the final note, I can imagine like Joseph being like. Uh, okay, and just not saying anything to Lilith for a while because just being so confused and overwhelmed by this whole experience that. Be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's definitely a little bit rapey. That's what I was saying. Like, you know, all this whole situation without yep. consent. Hmm. Yeah. So I think he's going to be unnerved <laughs> uh, and generally discombobulated after yeah, this I mean, experience. Like, when it was described, mm. when Lilith was getting her modification, she was a bit. Uh, not there when she was awakening like, you know she was like oh what's going on uh so i can imagine joseph and then also after go- undergoing go you know basically sex but basically having sex unconscious consciously i don't know yeah that's a, a super because i mean that i think it's 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 kind of him and lilith having sex which apparently they've been doing but at the same time now we've got the Uloi involved in this whole process. I don't it's, know if yeah, actually mm. they had sex as such, right? Like, I mean, there was an early in the chapter, in the previous chapter, it was saying that you no, know, when Joseph came to her bedroom and you know said no, can he join her bed? She said like it took everything in her to pull him into her bed, but uh, to not to pull him, right? But so mm. that was the book indicate like as if it didn't didn't happen. Yeah, it was kind of left a little bit unstated um, as to whether or not they had been. Yeah, I, 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 the sort of sense of intimacy between it's, them was there. Right, it was there. Like, I'm sure there was some yeah. sort of intimacy, at least like mm. some physical touch. But mm. I don't know if it if. But just I mean, like the the it's it, it, it seemed I mean because it's been a relatively short period of time and they seem to have like a. I don't know. It just seemed like the, like the degree of intimacy that they seemed to have generated very quickly had. And I, I, I'd assumed that they'd slept together, but I'm not. I mean, no, that's not necessarily an indicator, yeah. I suppose. I, I think but, I, I'm uh, actually. I was yeah. like that sentence when I as I just said that like it. It took everything not to do it in her. It seemed like she's trying to sort mm. of not to do it yet because she's uncertain of things, how things will go, and she doesn't mm. want to endanger him, but. Now it seems to maybe this will change, sort of like the attitude type. Mm. But anyway, I think let's finish our, on that beautiful yes. note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, interesting interpersonal developments yes. to come. 
So everyone, we were Xenothesis. You can find all the places we published our podcast on xenothesis.com. All the links are there. I was Mike and Glinka. I was Rich Nixon. Bye. Bye.